if you can see that, I don't know if you can see that here or not, it was 31 degrees Celsius, feels like 40, 6.30 p.m., uh, July 18th. Came up to Twillingate with my son and my parents for a little birthday getaway, and I'm not sure when the video will be ready, so my birthday will be passed by the time you see this, but basically came up to Twillingate for a little getaway, and we got a big trip on the way back to Mount Pearl Plan for tomorrow. Um, but we just made the most of this place and just sitting here right now kind of watching people out on the water doing their thing and taking some some zoomed in shots with my main camera there but just enjoying sitting here doing nothing and watching a lot of other people just enjoying whatever they want to enjoy when you've got this beautiful community like this with this big body of water that is just begging you to, to get out there. And uh, we see people on, on big whale watching tours and people now are just on their sea doos and whatever, whatever they have access to. Yeah, Twillingate has been pretty amazing. Uh, we've been here before, uh, but never on a, on a clear, sunny summer day. So it seems like every time we're here, it's, it's just not nice weather. So uh, we got lucky, we've been here for a couple of days now and it, it's, I mean, I couldn't ask for more. So. There's going to be lots of videos about Twillingate coming. We're going to be talking about some of the specific restaurants and tour operators, and there's lots of museums. We'll be talking about some of that stuff. The Georgina Sterling exhibit over at the Twillingate Museum is one of the things that uh, I was really excited about. I just really, really impressed with what they did over there to kind of honor uh, a great sort of unknown to a lot of people hero uh, in Newfoundland. We went down to Prime Birth. It's a museum. This guy is a tour boat operator as well, Captain Jack, and he has a, a really impressive looking walkthrough museum on site. And we went down yesterday at about 4 p.m. We did want to go and see the, the museum. We went down 4 o'clock, it was already closed. So I started, I threw my drone up in the sky and I took a couple of pictures. And by the time I uh, really got the drone going, I saw that there was a sign posted saying that they only authorize photos from customers for the tour, from the walking tour. So to be respectful, I stopped, put the drone back right away and stopped taking photos. But, um, you know, we did go for the purpose of actually paying for the museum and it was four o'clock in the afternoon and it was closed so to be uh, to be fair I'll show you a short little snippet of the video that I took the rest of it I'll keep for myself because out of respect for the, the request and uh, the unauthorized use of the photos but at the same time hopefully by sharing a little bit of the footage it might entice you to pop by as a paying customer and, and pay a visit to the museum and oh just over here by the way on a 31 degree day, 40, 40 degrees with the humidex, there's an enormous iceberg just beyond the entry to Twilling Gate Harbor here. A gigantic iceberg that on July 18th, well, it's a lot smaller today than it was July 17th, uh, but it's still out there and uh, there's a bunch of icebergs still somehow surviving. And the, well, the water certainly is, is really cold, but the, uh, the icebergs are uh, kind of still hovering around the Twilling Gate area all around the coast, which is just unbelievable like if you if you could feel this heat that I'm sitting in here right now and still just even think that there's an iceberg the size of friggin Mount Pearl sitting outside in the water it's, uh, it's just an impressive sight to behold I feel like it might be kind of hard to find someone who was born in Newfoundland or, or anybody who's lived here for a long time who isn't familiar with the town Twillingate but I also wonder like how many people don't know where it is located on a map. It's one of those eponymous towns because of 
it's probably the most famous Newfoundland song, but it's also like, yeah, it's just like a lot of people haven't been here before. It's located in sort of North Central and Notre Dame Bay. New World Islands is the actual like landmass that it's on. It has, of course, like so many places in Newfoundland, it has a really rich fishing history that was affected pretty deeply by the moratorium in 1992. And it's really revitalized through tourism recently. There's other things going on here as well, for sure. But tourism is a big player for sure. From May to September especially, there's a huge influx of people coming for the icebergs as early as May the whales through most of the summer, the town itself for the summer, especially if you're into outdoor activities on the water. The fall tourism season is picking up steam kind of all around Newfoundland now because fall is actually pretty beautiful in Newfoundland. I don't know specifically how Twillingate does with it, but it's, it's one of those um, sort of new uncharted territories where tourism in general was back you know, 30 years ago. We were lucky enough to spend a couple of days here during probably record-breaking temperatures and clear skies and weather was perfect um, not always going to get this here but even when it's not super nice weather there's still so many different things to do and sometimes the not so good weather is actually better for some of the activities Twillingate Lighthouse is actually in a town called Crowhead it's just north of the town of Twillingate itself but kind of out from outside of Twillingate you might consider it Twillingate Lighthouse uh, the lighthouse itself is definitely a draw. There's a little museum in there and the lighthouse has it's just a cool sort of unique um, Concrete lighthouse looks a little different from the typical ones you see around Newfoundland There is a couple of lookout spots looking out over the ocean and of course on the day that we were there The whales were playing and they were coming in the shore almost like almost too short now, I missed it, but my mom saw a whale breach completely, just completely jump out of the water and you get, I was away from the lookout but I was close enough that you could hear the, the crowd that was standing around cheer. it was pretty cool. Um, the, the town itself is also really pretty if, when you're driving up to the lighthouse or when you're driving down from the lighthouse. It's just a nice scenic little community. A little gift shop located at the, at the Crowhead Lighthouse as well and or the Long Point Lighthouse actually to be specific. I say the Twillingate Lighthouse, the Crowhead Lighthouse, it's actually called the Long Point Lighthouse. There is a gift shop there where they sell some you know typical Newfoundland souvenirs, t-shirts, keychains, magnets, things like that. But they have an ice cream store with a lot of delicious ice cream and the I guess the owner, I never asked them, but uh, the man who was working there was making fudge. They had probably 20 different flavors of fudge for sale, homemade, well store made it was made on site but uh, made by hand by the man who was working who yeah like i said maybe he's the operator i'm not sure but uh, pretty impressive my mom loves fudge she makes fudge but she she likes it in general she brought a couple of different flavors and i'll be able to sample a few of those oh canada oh canada We stayed in a house that was built in 1924. We're on the South Twillingate Island right now. Uh, but this house is actually built over, apparently, in the North Harbor, which is basically on the other side. We, we, I don't know if you can see the water there. This is kind of like the water separating North and South Twillingate, but it's connected by Cosby now. It's just one landmass. But we're on the South side at the moment. And the house was built and hauled across the land on the other side and then haul across the water and settle where it is right now. Pretty amazing to think this house is actually built well across the water over there and then across the land beyond the water <laughs> and haul over, you know, a big part of Newfoundland history was relocation. This is like literally what it was, people moving, physically moving actual houses to new locations and it's, uh, it's very <laughs> well-built structure, feels solid. A lot of the ceilings in the house are actually like six feet, maybe a little more than six feet. So I spent a lot of time ducking. <laughs> My back kind of hurts, but I'm 6'4". Uh, <laughs> the little ceilings didn't really bother me too much. It was just kind of part of it, you know. It's it probably more like luxurious accommodations around this town. But as far as I'm concerned, this is what I wanted, the, the sort of like authentic Twilling Gate experience. Twillingate definitely seems to have a lot more like adventure tourism uh, options available. 
a lot of well just like things to do on the water and there is a lot to do out on the water and you know you can see the, the sort of shape of the town the, the really big u-shaped harbor they have with uh, you know a nice protected entrance um, it's just it's kind of like a different layout than say like Bonavista or you know, the towns on Fogo Island other places that are really like tourist hotspots another one of the big differences is that there is uh, to my knowledge there's no like historical society and please let me know if I'm wrong about that but Bonavista has like like Bonavista living which deals with like the built heritage of the town and the restoration of the old houses that are there you got um, you know, Fogo Island Co-op, which isn't directly related to tourism by any means, but it shows on Fogo Island like a, the spirit of cooperation. It's a co-op. You got Shorefast. It's another organization that's really important to the revitalization of Fogo Island, but it's not, again, directly related to tourism, but it definitely tourism plays a pretty big role in it because that is a big industry over there. And as far as I know, there isn't one of those centralized sort of organizations here in Tooling Gate that kind of uh, brings the, the things together. There might be like some of the businesses or friends, the business owners are friends, and they have little cooperations that way and they, they work together. But it's just not, a, as far as I know, like the uh, formalized kind of organization like in some of these other places. If you get a chance to get away, if you're in the province of Newfoundland or if you're coming to Newfoundland from somewhere else, make sure it's a little bit out of the way if you're like flying into St. John's but definitely definitely worth the effort to, to get up to Twilling Gate and if you get lucky and you see clear blue skies like we have here today it's absolutely blowing my mind so anyway take care I'll be back with uh, a lot more pretty footage of this little road trip that uh, that me and my son and my parents went down here in uh, July 2023 all right talk soon